All right, so we talked a little bit last week about how we can use this new uh, library, the async uh, library from Loop J. This is the one that we downloaded, and this makes connecting to web services significantly faster and less wordy. So what we've done here, I've uh, converted, instead of using this entire uh, do-in background system with the async task, uh, I'm going to basically do away with that and use a, a new system. Um, <clears throat> so what we have to do is we no longer have to base encode, base64 encode our data because the library does that for us. So all we have to do is get the information from the text boxes. So we get the username from the text box and the password from the text box. And we call this method called set basic auth on the new client that we're getting from this new library, this async library. So we create a new async library. We set the authentication. And this, this method inside of here uh, does the base64 encoding for us. So we don't even need to, to do that. And then what we do is we do a get on our login URL, which is the same one we used before, this, uh, sorry, this one here, uh, user slash login dot JSON. And we have to create a new async response handler to handle what happens if it succeeds or if it fails. So if it fails, we're going to get data back here like access denied. Uh, and you'll have to do something like that something with that to show the user that uh, their information was wrong. So maybe you would do a, uh, um, a toasted kind of a alert saying access denied. You could just put the data in that message and that would, that would work pretty good. Let's do that. Why don't we do that? Let's toast it with uh, error. Connection error, and we'll add into it the image data string that comes back. So if it fails, this this will show a little alert to the user to show them what happened. Because that's the error message that comes back. That's just what you call it. You call it whatever you want. Yeah, it is. It's going to say something like access denied. Call it whatever you want. This is probably better. Error message. All right. So the on success is what happens when we've logged in correctly. I'm just logging out that response. And then we, we can do our JSON parsing just like we did before. Uh, use, and I copied this code directly from below. We convert the response that we get back, which is a JSON string. and I'm just create a user object that's a JSON object, and then I fill in my own data structure, which I call gamer, with all of this information, and I create a new object called current user. So that's all that did. And then we added this last week. Uh, we set the um, users button and this visibility on the uh, preferences menu so that it only shows up if you've logged in because what would happen is if you didn't log in and you went straight to preferences it would crash because the current user wasn't filled in yet so we don't even let them get to that because we've invalidated that information we've hidden that menu option all right so let's let's uh, run this in debug And let's first log in with a bad password. See if the failure works. So we'll just add some more text in here. Log in. And it's creating the new async handler. So we'll run from that. 
we get the failure, and if we look at the error message, we get HTTP basic access denied. That's perfectly reasonable to show the user. So we'll go and look at that. So we get a nice little toasted that showed up down here. All right, let's undo these, and you'll be able to see that toast it. Okay, good error. So that lets them know a little bit at least that their password is wrong or something like that. All right, we'll put our real password in here, and we will try to log in now. Now we get a login success, and this response is the entire JSON string, and I'm passing that to my JSON object uh, constructor, creates me a JSON user object, and I can just continue on with that. And it goes ahead and downloads my avatar, and now my preferences are available up here. This menu wasn't here before, and I can click OK, and I've got all my preferences. Isn't that great? I don't have a logout button, so let's run this again to show you that <coughs> uh, system. That must not be the right one. Let's, let's rerun it from here. So notice I don't have two menu items up here. Uh, and obviously, I should make these icons better. But when I log in now, this is the preferences menu. It gets becomes visible. And now I can click on that, and I can see my gamer information. Nice, eh? Any questions on that? Yeah, I don't know. There's no way. Yeah, I don't know if there's a way in this that they have some callback method that lets you update a progress bar. I don't know. So let's uh, let's search for it. Yeah, if if it's a long process, it would be nice to have a progress bar still. But uh, let's see. Okay, so let's see what they get. Uh, that doesn't answer the question. So this is looks like since this is open source, somebody else added it, but it doesn't look like. Ah, here you go. We've got a non-progress. So let's see if we can do that. So that's a that's a callback. information back. So let's log this to the login. And in this point, you could uh, update the progress bar. You could set the progress bar to some position, which we did down here. Um, where was that? In our Yes, yes. So here's my published progress um, and my progress update. This is, this is the method that I'm going to do. So I'm just going to call this inside of here. 
and the value is, let's go back and actually read what it says here. It gives you notifications every 64,000 bytes. So in this case, it's probably going to be one notification. Um, I'm not sure where the what the position means. It doesn't really say, huh? Experiment. Yeah. It, yeah, maybe that's true. So let's see what we get, um, and we'll set this to the length instead. Something like that. Uh, no, let's do position. All right, so we should get an I'll break in here, and we'll debug this guy. <coughs> Good question. Just have to figure it out. So we log in. Uh, I got an on progress position 288 length 496. So I'm not sure what that means. Um, Is that where it's at? Let's see. Let's just keep running it. Where let's see if I get another one. Yeah, so I never got another one. So that was the most I got. I got the. this one notification. So I think that my entire response is 288 bytes. And the, the length, um, this is the maximum that it would have requested 4K at a time. So I got 288 bytes out of 4K, but that's not right. It doesn't, you can't really do that math because they're, anticipating getting 4K, and it's really not the truth. Especially with uh, HTML like that. You'd have to have a long, you'd have to have more than 4K, it looks like, to even show a progress bar. Yeah, it's superfluous, yeah, so short. So anyway, that's how you do it if you want to do that. That's pretty cool. Not too bad. I'd have to play with those a little more to see what they really mean. Probably have to do a longer data. Alrighty. Yeah, that one is not using the new one. That's using that long system. So I'd have to convert that into this same kind of a concept. I like this a lot better. It's so much more simple than that do in background, just complicated. So it obviously can be done. I don't know why Android does, doesn't adopt that library. That would be the way to go. Yeah, <laughs> send them a note. All right, any other questions on that? Okay, pretty cool stuff. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right.